Hi everyone, it's George here from Ineltech, and in this video I'm going to show you how to add images to your e-ink display using Ineltech's e-ink software library. For this demo you'll need an e-ink explain pro with a 2.9 inch black and white display and a microchip SAMD21 explain pro board and a micro USB cable connected to a computer with Atmel Studio installed. You'll also need some software to convert bitmaps into data arrays for use on graphic LCD displays. I'll be using bitmap to LCD and I'll leave a link to the software in the description below along with links on where to source the explain pro boards. If you like this video and would like to see more like it then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell icon to ensure notifications are turned on so you don't miss out on any future videos. So the logo we're going to be using is this e-ink logo that I've got here. We're going to be turning that into a data array using bitmap to LCD and then the e-ink software library will then be able to pass it and render it onto the display. Let's open up the example project from the software library. If you don't know how to do that, then have a look in the top right hand corner and click the link to see how to get started. And once again, if you go into example projects, open up ED029TC1, which is the display that we're using, and open up the Atmel Studio solution there. So once again, head on into the main.c file. Let's scroll down to where our example screens are and let's just remove all this code since it's no longer going to be necessary. Let's copy this code here since we are going to keep that and just put it up at the top underneath there. And finally, I'm just going to remove this while loop because we're no longer going to be waiting for button presses. We're just going to come in, fill the screen with white, draw the e-ink logo and then be done. So next, let's open up bitmap to LCD so that we can convert our image. One thing to note is the dimensions of the image. Um, the width of the image doesn't actually matter, that can be any size, but the height has to be a division of eight. Um, and that's because this display being black and white uses one bit per pixel. Um, and as a result, because we need to use whole bytes, it needs to have a complete byte at the bottom, essentially, of that image, um, which means that the height has to be a, be a division of eight. Um, if we look at R1 to see the dimensions of it, let's go look down here. Uh, we can see that R1 is 250 by 120. So if we go into bitmap L2 LCD uh, and then under canvas size here, we're going to define the custom size as the width of 250 and the height of 120. Which is going to enable that. Next, we're going to go into um, GLCD graphic, load graphic from dialog. If I just pull that image in from my desktop, you can see there it's pulled in as a color image, but it wants it to be dithered and changed to a black and white image before we carry on. Um, so if we just click one on there and see where that goes, and then we can slide that along just to see what it's gonna look like. Um, so I'm just gonna pull it down a little bit. That looks absolutely fine as far as I'm concerned. Click okay, paste layer. Um, and then if you wanna make any adjustments, you can use this little pencil tool here, which will let you set. And then if you right click, you can then remove those pixels as well. Um, and finally, if we click on the little settings here, we can see exactly how we want to do it. So this is the most important part of using any software that can do this kind of thing is that obviously they all do it in different ways, but the settings that produce the output is actually what's most important. So we want to use um, big endian data in 8-bit format, and we want it to be vertically paged which means that it'll start in the bottom left-hand corner of the image and then make its way slowly up all the way up to the top and then it'll loop back round again. You'll notice there is also this one, but it's not quite the same because it'll page by one byte and then loop round rather than the entire screen size. So make sure that that's set to vertical upwards. And then I'm gonna, just gonna change the data per line to 15. Um, it doesn't matter what that is, it's purely, it's purely a graphical thing, what it actually looks like when it's produced. Um, but if you set it to the right number of height bytes, it just sort of looks a little bit nicer because it's set to, to what it would look like, basically. So before we generate that data array, we just need to make sure we've got somewhere to put it. Head back into File Explorer and let's head to our software library. Inside there, you'll find a bunch of images that come with the software library by default. Since the Ineltech logo.h file is also a black and white image, we're just going to copy that since it's already in the correct format and we'll just call that e-ink logo. And let's open that up to edit. Let's remove all of the data that's in there already since we no longer need it. Uh, and let's also rename everything. So we're gonna rename it e-ink logo. 
and we're just going to call it e ink underscore logo width height and the actual data array itself um, we're also going to change the width in pixels to 250 and the height in pixels is 120 so the number of bytes is set to 15. so let's go back to bitmap to lcd at the top select export work canvas to data and export to editor now and as you can see that's generated our data array straight away and let's just copy all of that and paste it into our header file so we'll post it there as the data array and then that's done let's go back to atmel studio and firstly we just need to make sure that we've included that file so let's do include e ink logo uh, and then just underneath where we've filled the background with white we just need to make sure we're then adding in the image so let's go gfx image load mono image which is the function let's firstly get the name of that data array um, and that's the first thing we're going to need followed by the size of that data array we then need to know the width which we've already got set as width followed by the height and next we just need to the x need to know the x and y coordinates so i'm just going to put it as zero zero just to make life easy um, and finally we need to know the foreground color and the background color um, so the foreground color is anything with a bit value of one and the background color is anything with a bit value of zero obviously different e-ink displays have different colors that they can be um, since this is a black and white display there are three options that we can use we can either have it as black uh, as white or as none so if it's set to none it'll just ignore that value um, which is quite useful if we're layering things on top of one another um, particularly if we're using color displays if we want to put a red color on top of a black color to form a composite image that kind of thing we just want to make sure we can have the ability to ignore that bit value um, so in this situation, I'm just going to set it to pixel black as the foreground and pixel none as the background since we already have a white background. Let's save that and program. And we should find it should build down here without any issue, which it has. And now it's programming up our display. So once programmed, we should see it update straight away since we're no longer running that while loop where we're looking at the button presses. And there we go. There's our update, adding the e-ink logo to the e-ink display. I hope that was easy to understand and you managed to get some great images onto your display. Leave a comment down below and let us know what you've managed to create. If you like the video, then leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.